Alex, I know you're only six, but I've told you the difference between a Doppelbach and a Scotch Ale. It's not complicated. Oh, I'm so sorry I didn't see you there. I just want to make sure that you know the facts presented in this episode are accurate as far as we know at the time of this recording. You're listening to the Beer History Podcast, hosted by David Tataro and Dennis Abdel Hammond. Today's guest, Bethany Tataro. And now, here are the hosts of the Beer History Podcast, David Tataro and Dennis Abdel Hammond. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the newest episode of the Beer History Podcast. I'm your host, David Nine Toes Totaro, and with me as always... I have a feeling there's a story there. <laughs> there's, there's literally not. With me as always later. is my counterpart, <laughs> Dennis Where's My Pants Abdel Hamid. Always a problem <laughs> when Dennis is around. That's how I got the nickname. Today we have it a... It gets hot in the studio, okay? Don't judge. <laughs> Today we have a, a, a guest who lives in the far off land of 15 minutes north of my house. <laughs> she happens to also be my sister, Bethany Tataro. Let's hear for Bethany, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Didn't you guys hear uh, a residence too for nine months? We did. No, it was longer than nine months. <laughs> well, I mean, wait, did I just miss a joke? A joke, yes. Ow. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Now I get it. That took a while. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, we literally did live together at one point. Well, Multiple two points. times. I mean, we grew up together. I'm saying <laughs> as adults. Anyway. <laughs> but I digress. Uh, <laughs> today, our episode is on uh, ancient beers. And I brought my sister Bethany in here for two reasons. One, because she is a uh, beer aficionado. <laughs> And two, because she also uh, is uh, interested in several different ancient cultures. Would you like to elaborate, true. Bethany? Uh, I, I've always been interested in ancient cultures, especially Egypt and also Rome, because we are Italian. Those so are two of the big yeah. topics, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been interested in that. Um, I did visit the uh, ancient Roman baths in London or in England when I went a couple of years ago, and that was really cool. It was kind of like... <sighs> I want to go. It was really awesome. Like, you literally felt like you were in Rome. Like, it was... It was amazing. Um, they don't let you swim in the baths, though. That would have been cool. Is there water in them or are they oh, all yeah, dried yeah. out? Really? It's all disgusting looking, though. It's not nice. Ew. They let you drink some. What? <laughs> They're like, it's holy water. <laughs> no, it's supposed to have healing properties because there's so many minerals in it. That's why they went. It was like a spa day for Minerals them. or bacteria? It, it was disgusting. Did you drink it? Oh, yeah. Ew. Of course, you have to. I mean, it's a tiny That's little like St. Augustine. They're like, drink from the fountain of youth, <laughs> yeah. which is made of sulfur. No, I was thinking about the episode of The Simpsons. Where uh, uh, Lisa drinks the water. Yes. <laughs> Bart, shut up, Lisa. Drink the water. I love that episode. It's so anyway, much. it was disgusting. I, I believe. Mean, it was oh, like, that was a beer related episode too, because they were at yeah, Duff, Duff beer. Duff Gardens. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was really cool. Oh, the um, and then I've always liked ancient Egypt. I did recently find out that they're obsessed with board games. We're obsessed with board games. So because we're ancient I, Romans. <laughs> no, no, Egyptians. Oh, oh, yeah. They they found them oh, in were. there. I thought you said yeah. we're. Well, That's why I, I thought you were talking about Italians. I'm also obsessed with board games. <laughs> so I, I connect there on a different level. Um, That's but interesting. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. They found like the, it was like a chess kind of game that you, they used to play called like Senate or something like that. And they, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. I they thought you were gonna say they called it like checkers. <laughs> it's kind of like chess, but less complicated. It's pronounced checkers. Checkers. <laughs> anyway, what? Uh, what oh, good. But uh, so yeah, I, I've always liked ancient cultures. But as for beer, yeah, I've that was my next question. Been drinking beer for quite a while. Um, but you know, of course, I started off with, you know, in college with lagers Crap. and whatever bud light but my first very favorite like real beer that i had was delirium tremens at oh, world of i have beer. some in my fridge downstairs yeah it, it, i still love it to this day but it got me into like the belgians and goldens and that kind of thing and i remember then, that was like all you drank at yeah first. yeah I, I liked any kind and then i i kind of got into ipas and then from there i got into uh, like brown ales and then stouts. And now I like anything except lambics are still not my favorite. Really? Like they're hit or miss for me. Like <sighs> some are disgusting. Some See, are... lambics were one that I didn't like at the very beginning. But like any kind of 
sour lambics. I love sours. Sweeter I mean, beers. Yeah. None of them. I didn't like any of that stuff. And now I'm like. Sours man. are one of my favorite now. I, I, I really have you ever had sours. a Have you ever had a Crick beer? K R E I K. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a cherry lambic. Those are so. Good. Yeah, I actually I I, love I don't those. mind though. There's just some that they they're always different, like very different. So yeah. they're hit or miss, I think, for me. Um, and then like super like. Sweet dark pastry stouts are not my thing, but other than that, I'm, like that's it, one of the few styles that I'm not. They're a so huge hard fan to of. drink, and they're so so sweet because you, you have to finish it. That's the problem. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I like yeah, those yeah. beers if they're a, a if it's a sample yeah. in a flight. Me too. Yeah, yeah I'll get a flight of, of something, but ta- um, ta- talk about the uh, your uh, untapped thing. That, that you've yeah, been doing. so I so I, this is Bethany's got a pretty impressive portfolio. <laughs> I have a nice of beers resume. That she's tried. Um, yeah, so I I started drinking craft beer maybe you know five or six years ago. And then maybe two years ago, I started logging them all into Untapped. Yeah. And I have I I was doing like regular beer tastings on Thursdays where we try like five different beers. We do like a a cider for the first beer uh, or something light like a lager. Then the second one would be a sour of some kind or Berliner Weiss something like that. Third would be any kind of ale like a Belgian ale like some kind of um, a, a flavored ale or something. Fourth is an IPA, and fifth is some kind of stout or brown ale. I didn't know you followed like a format like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You have to have one of each kind. You guys, <laughs> this is Bethany and a couple of her friends. They have like a whole system. Uh, yeah. There's a rating you know, system. I'm, there's I'm a, betting I've systems. I've participated <laughs> a couple of times. It's, <laughs> it's really It's fun. so over the top and elaborate. Yeah. <laughs> there's literally basketball involved sometimes. Yes. Yes. That's, a, that's a new addition where you oh, can get extra it? points. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we started logging all the beers we tried because we tried so many and then you, you can't remember. all the beers? <laughs> Uh, we couldn't remember what we had had or if we even liked it. So uh, we started logging it and untapped it. And we're up to like 1,300 different beers in the past two years. And that's, and that's only Thursdays. No, it's extended a little bit. But it's only when you guys are together, though. It's not yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not yours. It's not my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and just since, the ones. What did you say, like two, group. three years ago or something like that? Two, two. years ago. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it averages to like two beers a day. <laughs> and it's not two beers it's a not, day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's little gaps in between. Well, but. plus you guys are splitting them too. It's not like you're pounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you end up drinking beers. a beer in a quarter or whatever. Yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like. But anyway, so I've, awesome, I've definitely though. tried a lot of different varieties. Ones from, you know, where beer clubs or, you know, I don't know, ones that we people got on trips from places that you can't get here. So definitely tried a lot of different kinds of beer. And I'm definitely a beer fanatic. Yes. As am I. I always uh, uh, make sure I check a bag, even if I'm going for like a weekend by myself, because yeah. I have to have some place Bring to put some growlers everywhere. bottles of whiskey, yeah. bottles of beer, because <laughs> you can check all that stuff. Just wrap it in a sock or whatever, toss it in your luggage, and you're good to go. Yeah, but there's one of my coworkers did that. <laughs> <laughs> he wrapped it in one of his shirts and they ended up having to check his bag for some reason. Mm. Like they opened it and went through it and all of them broke and his whole bag was soaking what? wet with beer. Okay. Yeah, he's not he ended wrapping up them throwing good. it all away. Like, so because- I've, I've, I've checked beer and whiskey in my luggage dozens of times. Yeah. So many times. I've been doing it for years Yeah, and I've had my beer open and checked the person that opened it. I don't know. Because they put a little, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they put a thing saying we're not responsible for the damage in yeah. your bag. But I've never <laughs> had like anything smashed. break, but I, but I'm like meticulous. Yeah. At how well it, but then I guess it's like if they go in and they open and they pull the stuff out and then they just toss it back in. I guess that's the, yeah. If they take it out of the, the sock or whatever you say, and then yeah. just throw it back in. And that sucks. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. All right. So on to the episode. Uh, what uh, I wanted, I want you guys to both guess, and you might already know. I don't know because I know you've researched this type of mm-hmm. stuff. What would you guys say is the uh, the earliest brewing operation for how beer? Many, how many how many years ago? Thousands of years ago for beer, the earliest that they've for been able, that they've excavated that they found five thousand BC. Five thousand. Okay, so what seven thousand years ago, right? Mm-hmm. About Dennis. Uh, I'm bad at math. Four hundred ninety nine BC. <laughs> I think it would be higher or late earlier. If I I'm going to give you a second guess because that's whole nine thousand. Way older. Nine thousand. Uh, well, you can't change your answer. Well, how can, he can change his answer. <laughs> okay, fine. He already guessed. Nine thousand. He hatched and went under, and he lost. He did. That's true, Dennis. <laughs> One dollar, Bob. <laughs> how many? How many thousands of years ago would you say? Uh, two thousand and twenty <laughs> years ago. <laughs> What was I just thinking? Of just say no and we'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, it was that SNL skit with uh, in, um, Will Ferrell when he's uh, Harry Carey 
And he's doing that show. Would you, if the moon were made of cheese, would you, <laughs> would eat, you eat that too? Yeah. He's like, I don't, I don't It was uh, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> just, say, just say no and we'll move on. Anyway, bad tangent. The answer is 13,000. 13,000 oh, wow. years ago. Interesting. That's a long time ago. And now this isn't the earliest, uh, um, what's it called, uh, evidence of beer. This is literally the oldest brewing operation, hmm. 13,000. I think I saw one one of my references said uh, they found stuff as late as like 15,000 years ago when it comes to beer. Pretty crazy. So um, we're talking Very a old. long time ago. And uh, um, there was uh, actually at that that site where they found that uh, that brewing operation – it was pretty sizable, and uh, it was a, where was it? Like these Israeli caves. Uh, Israel obviously didn't exist. Mesopotamia. At the time. Uh, yeah. Well, it was the Natufians, oh. uh, which is in the Eastern Mediterranean. The Natufians. So they were big. This is like an ancient culture that was big in a beer. There's lots of evidence showing that. And um, there was this Chinese archaeology professor named uh, uh, Li Lu from Stanford University. She was like the one leading that whole operation, that project, excavating the site. And uh, and she actually says that it's the oldest record of any man-made alcohol in the world. So beer is the first the first alcohol. That's pretty cool. Yeah, predates wine, anything else. Uh, in fact, distilling, Dennis. Fun fact: you may have heard me talking about <laughs> earlier today. Uh, is uh, how, how old do you think distilling is? Dennis already heard this. What do you think? Uh, how well, many it's years? Gotta ago? be after you said beer was the first. It's so, not thirteen thousand. Um, I'll distilling. go with seven. 2000 that's it oh, like 2000 okay. years ago isn't that crazy like jesus was the first one yeah like jesus was around <laughs> when whiskey was first produced i'm sure it was not whiskey it was probably a brandy or something but uh yeah pretty nuts and it was a graveyard actually this brewing brewing operation so beer is very closely linked with the dead in a lot of these cultures like ritually and stuff like mm-hmm. that um and then you know i'm sure as, as far as egyptians goes which we'll go to get, get to later you know they had, they stored it in the tombs right, right. and all that stuff so they could bring it to the afterlife. So uh, uh, China, you've got beer dating back in China like 9,000 years. And theirs had uh, like rice and honey and fruit and things like that. There were all kinds of adjuncts that they put into it. Honey was like, a have noticed, a popular ingredient in uh, beer across all these different ancient cultures. And I think... I mean, it's an easy way to sweeten things and... Well, I think it was, it was uh, less to sweeten and more to... Ferment. Ferment, mm-hmm. yeah, because I think a lot of their processes were so archaic. They weren't. I mean, it wasn't like they had yeah, yeah. a malting. It just know, sat in a pot. Maltster like, <laughs> cr- creating, yeah. you know, the malting the barley and creating uh, all these sugars and stuff. So yeah, exactly. It just sat in a pot. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what they would do in in China? Uh, this is crazy. I could not believe this. Actually, this is one of the last things I researched for this episode. Uh, they actually found pots in China in some. I think it was also in a grave site. Uh, that had broken down just the right way where mm-hmm. they completely sealed and the material and preserved it yes in liquid form 3000 years old what? they actually found these pots opened them up and there's literally 3000 year old liquid to drink beer that? i mean you would, I, I can't imagine you would survive <laughs> <laughs> It just doesn't seem possible. But the fact that it was in liquid form means That's, all of the elements of it must yeah, still be intact. Still Nothing could get out, right, mm-hmm. after 3,000 years. So, um, yeah, what they would do back then is uh, they would go into these tombs. And it, so it wasn't just like with the Egyptians where they're like, we're going to keep this beer and then, uh, you know, the dead can drink it after the yeah. dead. It was also like uh, they would go into these tombs and have these rituals where they would literally drink the beer until they got drunk. And they would use that as like a medium to talk to the dead. So (laughs) anyway, uh, so let's move forward in time a little bit. Because uh, although we do have uh, evidence of beer in these really ancient cultures, there's not a lot of information. There was no written word. You know, uh, that was something that came a little bit later. Um, So you have uh, Mesopotamia, Mm -hmm. which... uh, you know, it was the, the fertile crescent between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Yeah. And it's funny. I'm saying this like, oh, I just researched it's this. It's literally what Wikipedia says. Does it really? Do you I, remember? I was, no, when I, was, uh, when I was in elementary school, I remember specifically. Yes, they teach you they that. They really yes. taught the crap out of that to yes. the point where it like always was in my, you know, the Tigris and the Euphrates river. So, <laughs> you know, you had the Sumerians who lived in mm-hmm. Mesopotamia. Um, this is, We're talking 3500 BC. Um, you know, this is when they were developing technology for the first time agriculture and the wheel and 
uh, you know, uh, mathematics, like simple mathematics and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, you know, since you had written word finally at this point in, in time, you, you can kind of go back and look at uh, um, all kinds of things in all different places with written information talking about what was going on that day and, uh, you know, uh, commodities that were used and all kinds of cultural, mm-hmm. interesting cultural things. And they talked about food, of course, quite a bit because that's just a common thing in any culture. Uh, and by far, and this isn't just in the Sumerians, it's the Egyptians as well. Uh, beer is the number one food that you see mentioned in all of their writings. Yeah, that's so, like they didn't drink water. They only if they ran out of beer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was where they got their nutrients because it was beer, wine, honey, and bread. Like that's all they ate. Yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely, it's pretty nuts. So you think beer is so big in our culture, which it is, and in other cultures, Germany and, and things like that. Uh, it's like next level back then. I mean, it was it was that that was the food that was everything. So, uh, you know, they even worshipped gods and goddesses and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and the uh, the Sumerians had uh, one called uh, Ninkasi. You ever heard of Ninkasi? I have not. She's the goddess of, uh, wait, actually, Ninkasi literally means the lady who fills the mouth. Oh, okay. She sounds like a really nice lady to me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a, a book um, uh, by Garrett Oliver called uh, The Brewmaster's Table. And hold on. Which I happen to have right here. <laughs> Garrett Oliver is awesome. He's the brewmaster for um, Brooklyn Brewery. And as I'm, I don't know if you remember me ever telling you this, but my favorite beer on earth is Brooklyn Black Chocolate Stout. And this is literally the man who invented that beer. Mm. Oh, he's amazing. Do you cuddle with it at night? I do. Oh, my God. It's so good. <laughs> he I have, kicks his wife out of the pit. Yeah. <laughs> the book's with room. us today. <laughs> <laughs> I have... Uh, <laughs> I've got maybe like, I don't know, 20 plus bottles of Brooklyn Black Chocolate Stout aging in my beer cellar, a.k.a. my cabinet above my kitchen. (laughs) And uh, from all different years. Oh, my God. It's so good. Go out and get some if you have never had it. But Garrett Oliver, he's a scholar. He's a a chef. I mean, this book is is all about beer, uh, but it's also all about food and and uh, and culture. It's and he's super funny, too. But anyway, um, I enjoy him a lot. If you couldn't Mm -hmm. tell. So I'm going to read this to you. This is uh, Garrett Oliver talking here. Um, By now, it should not surprise you that the oldest known recipe is for beer. Over 4,000 years ago, the Sumerians of Mesopotamia worshipped Ninkasi, the goddess of beer. A hymn to Ninkasi was inscribed on clay tablets in the 18th century BC, and those tablets have survived for us to read. The hymn praises the goddess as it describes all of the wonderful things she does, and all the wonderful things she does just happen to produce beer. (laughs) The whole hymn is a recipe rendered as a poem or a song. Ninkasi breaks, bakes bread, this is important, uh, called bapir, seasoned with dates and spices, then soaks the bread and squeezes the liquid through a straw mat into a jar. Once the liquid had fermented into the beer, it was drunk through reed straw. So they weren't like malting barley mm-hmm. and, you know, doing a boil and, and uh, you know, Actually, I, I listened to a podcast about this... Um this little clay tablet that they found that was only like the size of a computer mouse. And it was one of the first evidence of writing that they, you know, when writing Is that Egyptian? was just, no, this was Mesopotamia. Oh, it was Mesopotamia. Yeah. Uh, it was a BBC podcast. Um, but on the tablet, it was a little tiny clay tablet and it was rations of beer because they didn't, have currency at the time so they paid workers oh, in beer yeah 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 and it was right. the bapir or whatever that you drink through a straw like, like a yeah. porridge or whatever so so was it like kind of like a notepad sort of like yes, or like, that's how they, yeah, yeah. like this is how much this worker gets or whatever that's pretty, <laughs> it was like that's pretty drawings cool. and writing you know it was it was pretty cool man i would love to get something like that to put in like a shadow box with like cool old beer member like yeah. i've got my little well, i don't think any of the cameras can see it oh maybe the wide one that would be an awesome in the yeah, shadow yeah. box, my beer yeah. shadow box. What was cool or interesting about it, though, is once they uncovered these clay tablets, the whatever museum they're housed in now or whatever has to actually take them out and rebake them every so often what? or it starts to disintegrate. How was it? Oh, but originally it was I guess, in a, I guess it underground was in so, a or special whatever. environment. Yeah, yeah. But Crazy. now they have to rebake it, which I think is weird. So uh, I brought... Uh, 
a beer out here by Dog of a Shed, which you may or may not have had. I would I imagine, may have had I this. imagine you have. It is in my list. <laughs> I can imagine Dennis has not. No. <laughs> uh, it's called Midas Touch, which is uh, um, an ancient ale, they call it. It says, uh, somewhere between my- wine and mead, our original ancient ale is made with ingredients found in 2,700-year-old drinking vessels in the tomb of King Midas. Barley, honey, uh, white muscat grapes, and saffron. Nice. So there's that honey, right? Is that honey, honey? <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna move this. My uh, beer list is sort of like my relationship list. It's it's very small and domestic. But <laughs> 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 oh, this will be different than most beers you've had before, Dennis. All right. Dogfish Head is one of my favorite breweries. Yeah, they're in my top three so, for they're sure. They're so good. They make such great stuff. Mm-hmm. A Dogfish Head ninety minute. Mm-hmm. I just had one of those yesterday. So good. So, 120 minute so is good. my favorite though. I actually, I think, I mean, I enjoy drinking 120 more just because it's like you don't get to have it very often and the experience is I really just, cool. I love it. But On tap. 90 minute is just amazing. Is there going to be an ancient toast that we do for this one? <laughs> Here, let me give you the. Uh, hold on, let me give. I'm gonna. I'm gonna drink this one. Okay. Because the other one's girly looking, and that one's more manly looking. <laughs> and it'll be less. You don't want to drink out of a girly cup. No, or you don't want I, me to drink out of a manly actually, cup. This is one of my favorite cups. I love this cup, but <laughs> I do it, like that one. Just it's nice. the juxtaposition between the two of us <laughs> be super weird. So <laughs> you're drinking it with like your pinky out. Hold on, or whatever. <laughs> I feel like I didn't give you. Nearly yeah, what as the much heck? As I gave myself here. Hold on. Don't spill it. Don't spill it. Remember, kids, if you ever have to pour between glasses, do it fast. If you do it slow, <laughs> that's when it goes everywhere. This is a pretty sweet glass. Yeah, and it's a pretty sweet beer. Do you, were you, uh, that was. A pop-up glass? Oh, no. Um, uh, Wicked Weed in North Carolina in Asheville. That's you where got I got this that. there? Oh, yeah. okay. Cool. Wicked Weed. Fantastic brewery. Dennis, I want to know what you think. I don't like it. <laughs> really? <laughs> really at it all? It tastes like honey. Yeah, like it's, really... it's sweet, but it's also got a bite. Yeah, it, it's not obnoxiously sweet. I like it. Our uh, production staff has some. What do you think? Thumbs up? Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> it has the perfect amount of hops at the end to, to like cut the sweet at the oh, beginning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't even feel like... It doesn't feel like you drank something sweet no. by yeah. the time you get to the, the end. Anyway... Um, this, this, not, this buck was like not a good idea for a giant pile of wires. Anyway. <laughs> Just leave that on the floor. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, so the Sumerians, uh, <laughs> this is nuts. So they were so big into beer, um, that they got into creating varieties, like what, I guess what we would call styles mm-hmm. and, uh, um, like Babylon, of course, is, you know, one of their major cities uh, in Mesopotamia. And um, they had like 70 plus styles, at least, that we know of. Uh, so they would have festivals and all kinds of stuff. It was almost like similar to That's our beer cool. culture here in the U.S. now. Um, like our beer fest that we have in downtown. <laughs> yeah, only they were probably like sacrificing people, and, like <laughs> spilling Burning, blood. Burning, yeah. <laughs> sacrificing. Nice. So... Uh, the Egyptians, next topic, uh, they were huge into beer, mm-hmm. uh, at least as much as the Sumerians were, if not more. Um, and it's kind of interesting if you think about it, the whole God-beer connection that they made, that both of those cultures made, and probably a lot of cultures back then, uh, like it was given from the gods. We're talking about this drink that you take it, you're taking water, which most of the time was not healthy to drink, right? Because standing water mm-hmm. is where they would get these a lot of these sources. Uh, you're taking this unedible thing. You're adding like some grains, and magically it turns into this delicious drink, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it seems like magic. It's That's all of a sudden, good for you. Yeah, it's making water safe. It's it tastes super good. It makes you feel good when you drink a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they used it as like an antiseptic and stuff. They learned that it could like you know help wounds heal better and things like that mm-hmm. i mean it's like there's not a negative everything about it is amazing and right. it comes from nothing so to them it was like this was something the gods gave us uh you know to help us survive and make us happy and and all that kind of crazy stuff so um so you know they 
they had their culture uh, took it seriously. And, and uh, there's all these accounts that they found uh, where, you know, people were drowned in their own beer if they didn't produce it properly, if they cut corners or if it Jeez. came out not safe, you know, all kinds of I crazy guess stuff. I not the worst way to die. <laughs> Even, I know, drown in your own beer. I mean, if it's sucky beer, though. Yeah. The uh, ABV isn't high enough, you know, it might not be as, as nice. That's right. <laughs> They uh they would even do things like that if you uh, overcharged at like a, mm-hmm. a, a tavern scenario, yeah. you know, if you were like trying to cheat people. I that's mean, it's like crazy. if you're messing with beer, then that's not cool. Uh, and then they, I've also read that they had a greeting when you would pass somebody, you would say bread and beer, mm-hmm. bread and beer, <laughs> bread and beer. I think we should start doing it. Yeah. To strangers. <laughs> I'm like, what? Sure, I'll take them. <laughs> I'm confused. Bread and beer. What, what else are your demands? <laughs> So, you know, as early as like the early 1900s, uh, we were able to find sediment on vessels and stuff like that, which is interesting because 1901 I was one of the ones examples I was reading. You wouldn't think that we would have the technology to take these old dry containers from thousands mm-hmm. of years ago and figure out what was in it. But there was yeah. that much uh, for us to work with. I just watched uh, a YouTube video, which was from what I would assume is the late 80s, early 90s. It's worth watching just to see what they're wearing at the time. <laughs> what's, was, it, what's it called? Uh, it's called like beer, Pharaoh's liquid gold or something like that. Oh, that was the one you mentioned at time. Yeah. So it was a timeline, timeline video. Yeah. So, Is um, that like the production company timeline. Yes. Okay. So, but the, the brewery that actually like funded this was uh Scottish in Newcastle in Scotland, which I've learned has since been bought out by Heineken recently. Oh, uh, Newcastle yeah. was bought up by Heineken. Yeah. So um, anyway, so one of the executives goes to Egypt and they uh, he meets with a bunch of archaeologists. They mm-hmm. end up finding one of these pots that you're referencing. And there was just a tiny little deposit at the very bottom of the, just a tiny little thing. Yeah. And they ended up, you know, gathering the residue and they ended up figuring out the ingredients of it was it was beer. They were hoping to find a vessel yeah, of yeah, beer and yeah. it was beer. So they ended up recreating the the beer of Nefertiti was the time period. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, they, they used the same tools that they used in ancient Egypt. They got, I don't remember what they're called, but, you know, a, a rock and a grindstone, you know, a like. Mortar. Yeah. yeah, grinding down the, the wheat into mm-hmm. like a flour or whatever. And um, there was actually, when they did the chemical makeup of the, the uh, malt, I guess, whatever wheat it was, there was two different, like they they treated it in two different ways and combined it. So it wasn't like one kind of wheat that was in there. It was two kinds that they put in there. Yeah. I was, I think they were like back then there was two kinds of wheat, uh, that they think they used. And one of them was like, not really good for baking bread. Yeah. It was like really difficult to harvest or something. Mm-hmm. Start with an E. Is that, did it start with an E? Do you remember? They didn't say the name of it. I, uh, I don't remember what it was, but I've seen it in a couple, couple yeah. different things. It was pretty cool. And then they also found that they had, they ended up making four different beers, a, a plain one, one with coriander because they use they found yeah. coriander in there, and then also, I'm gonna be completely honest. I know it's a dried fruit because I was watching the video and I saw them mashing dates. a dried fruit. No, it wasn't dates. Really? But they said it in a British accent, and I listened to it like four times, and I have no <laughs> idea what they said. But it was a dried fruit of some kind, and then so they made no one way. of each of those, and then one with uh, them all combined. You know, was was the fourth beer, yeah. so ended up being like a, a really light colored wheat ale. It was it was very sweet, they said, and you know, but like a clean taste. But it was pretty cool to watch the whole um, and how many people it took from start to finish to try to, and how long it took to brew this beer. You know, did they did they use like the the methods with the, the reeds pot. and the yes? Yeah. They showed the pot and it was like all like not boiling over, but like all disgusting yeah. and like. <laughs> could you imagine back then, like the the sanitary issues and uh, stuff? If it didn't have alcohol in it, then yeah. they would all be dead. Like mashing with like a stick, you know, like the coriander just dumping it, and like it it wasn't uh, very fancy looking. But yeah, they they had they wanted to do it the exact way to see you know what yeah, it yeah. tasted like. Heck which, yeah, That's that how must I have been pretty cool. It. Well, I, I actually read something kind of similar. Uh, there's this guy named Seamus Blackley. Which is a cool sounding name. Do you recognize that name, Dennis? Isn't he the guy from Harry Potter? That's what I was just thinking. No. Serious Black. <laughs> that was my first thought too. I didn't want to say that. No, but you should put a picture of Seamus Black and Serious Black. And Serious Black, Black yes. <laughs> so the people can compare. No, Seamus Black, uh, he's actually 
uh, the guy that invented the Xbox. Okay, this is real weird. Wait, wait, wait. What? The guy who invented what does this have the to do Xbox. With beer? It, it, I'm getting there. So well, uh, a lot of kids would get angry and play Xbox and drink beer. Chug beer yeah. No, this guy, he's actually a physicist. I think he, he like went to school to be an electrician and then switched to physics and then got into like uh, game development and stuff. And eventually he like, um, he did a couple of things that were pretty well known at the time and uh uh, he started working for Microsoft, and uh, I guess he got close with uh, Bill Gates, and mm-hmm. he came up with the idea for Xbox. I'm going off on a tangent, <laughs> but because uh, at the time, like uh, Microsoft wanted to compete in gaming, but the problem was like they pl- had so many different platforms with third party manufacturers. So, th- you know, this guy Seamus uh, Blackley was just like, "Why don't we make a console then? You know, and then it'll be universal." Mm. And, and they did, and Xbox <laughs> was born. Well, anyway, I don't know how he got involved in this stuff with his physics or whatever, but he actually was able to extract yeast from bread, actual bread that was 4,000 years old. So this bread got buried, I would imagine in a burial chamber, like Mm -hmm. everything else. And, uh, they excavated, they found it and he was able to find yeast in it. And it's nuts. There's, I can't remember what the word is, but there's a word for it. Yeast can go through this process called mishmemer Mm nemergeber. And, uh, I should stop pointing up because it doesn't give you the, the uh, creative control to put it anywhere else. Um, I mean, he could. It just would look a little weird. <laughs> but uh, they, um, it, yeast literally can go into hibernation like forever. I mean, 4,000 years yeah, went that's by. that's crazy. And they were able to revive this yeast and it was alive still. Isn't that nuts? That is crazy. So, like honey. There's got to be some record like that's the oldest known living <clears throat> creature or something. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so he, he actually... His his thing was he wanted to bake the bread, mm-hmm. uh, which he did. But eventually they took that and uh, um, they brewed beer using it. So so they they created – they found two different yeast strains, I think. Yeah, they found two. And they were like, okay, here's one from a beer vessel and here's one from the bread. And they wanted to see if they were different or if they were the right. same. Um, and then they brewed beer using both different yeasts to see how it came out. And, and uh, it was pretty interesting, like – Reading through it and seeing how nasty it was, because beer back then was like porridge. Almost. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they uh, and they they drank it like from a like a most of the time from like a communal pot. Mm-hmm. So I think like that nasty vessel you were talking about. Yeah. They would let it ferment for not even that long. It was lower alcohol back then, and they would uh, they would take these reed straws and literally drink it together. Yeah. From that pot, and they think that the reason why is no because, COVID back then. Well, they said there was like nasty crap at the top and there was all the sediment yeah, at the bottom yeah, yeah. so they would kind of drink in the middle in the middle and yeah, yeah. that's disgusting uh you know and i watched a video where these uh these women who work for the british museum they did the whole thing mm-hmm. they made it just like them and you saw what it looked like in the pot and it's super gross the the uh youtube video that i watched they had found calcium like they added calcium to the beer like it uh, how'd they do that i don't i, I don't know they just and Wait, you're, are you saying modern they did? They found oh, calcium it, in the pot, so they added calcium. You're saying to, that the Egyptians were yes, adding calcium to the pot. Yes. or the, I mean, they found it in there. So what? like at one point they, they had like the, I don't know what it's called in the brewing process, but it was like, it looked like the porridge part where they were straining it or whatever. Yeah. And they had added calcium and they're like squeezing all the grains to get like the liquid out. It was, yeah. it was a little weird. That is super bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty neat. I, I mean, mean, it was their main source of nutrients, so you yeah, got to add what I'm you sure, can. Well, I'm sure they put a lot of uh, thought and effort, and in, in yeah. t- over over time, it probably got refined and right. stuff like that. But the, but this whole drinking from a pot thing kind of showed that, um, you know, because this beer that they would brew would, would go bad in just a couple days. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like like yeah. like a lot of foods, perishable foods. So uh, and there were there were things that they had uh, that they even would use in other circumstances that. that that acted as preservatives and they never really found ev- any evidence that they did that with beer because they, they it just, was meant to it be was their water consumed like immediately. they just drank it all the time yeah. yeah they weren't like brewing it and storing it and exporting it out yeah. you know uh although at some point uh i did read that they um they started uh commercializing it to a point and uh they would make huge amounts of money uh like uh what i got in here somewhere pharaoh uh, ramses the second um, he had like these huge breweries that would that would brew like thirty thousand barrels of beer uh, a year, and which for, at that time would that would be pretty gigantic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he used the money that he would 
you know, make selling this beer to create like his armies and like build these huge structures and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. I mean, it was like a, a whole commercial enterprise. Uh, apparently, uh, this is pretty funny. So they have um, some pretty cool, like funeral texts that they found. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, they were big in a written word, the Egyptians, and uh, it was probably more so than than any other culture up until that point. And uh, they went into like great detail about some of the, uh, some of the, um, the things that they would do with the beer, and uh, how they would produce it and how they would sell it and all this kind of stuff. And they actually had like brand names. Really? Yeah. Like they know of at least three that I that I was able to find. They had one called Joybringer. Okay. They had one Sounds called nice. one called the Beautiful. <laughs> And then one called... Lady that puts things in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's ancient Sumerian. Oh, sorry, Come on. sorry. Wrong civilization. Well, yeah, the other one was called... So if you think the beautiful was clever, the heavenly. <laughs> nice. Pretty good, right? I'd like to try the heavenly, please. They had, an awesome, they had some awesome marketing back then. I would like to be referred to as the joy bringer from now on. <laughs> I am the joy Maybe bringer. that's your next nickname. <laughs> that should be. <laughs> and I'll be the beautiful. <laughs> They, yeah. uh, kind of an yeah. ego you got on you. <laughs> and and so those were brands. They also had like styles that they listed mm-hmm. multiple texts that, that, you know, people have found repeated. Um, they had one called dark beer, iron beer, garnished beer, friends beer. I'm counting like <laughs> it matters. Uh, beer of the protector and beer of truth. And that oh, one, wow. that one, that one, that was, must be the high ABV one. That was the one that was drunk <laughs> by the gods. That was the yeah. high ABV one. <laughs> Yes, I think you might be right. But uh, I thought that was pretty cool, though. I mean, they had styles and they had varieties. They had brands. I mean, it was yeah. like... Yeah, and they also, I, I um, in the the documentary that I watched, they also cared about the process itself as well. Uh, and they have found in many different tombs statues of the brewing process. Like, they've actually created, you know, statues of them making the beer throughout the whole process. Oh, because cool. and, and even serving the beer because they thought if... If you made a statue and put it in the tomb, yeah. then when you went to the afterlife, you'd have those servants to do those same things for you. So it was really important so, to them. It's <laughs> because... such a rough deal to get to be like, oh, I was a servant my entire life and now I'm dead and I get to be a servant. I get to be a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least maybe you could drink the beer while you serve it. So it's not that I, bad. I just, <laughs> I want to see like what they, how they came up with these rules. You know, there had to be yeah, like who some was point like, where some guy was like, hey, if we make a statue, tomb. then... <laughs> That probably These happens. Are to me forever. Yeah, and then someone else is like, "Yeah, that probably does happen. Let's make those statues." It was probably somebody that was like super lazy, that was or, like, yeah, or, yeah. or he drank a little too much truth yeah. beer. He was like, uh, "I don't want to have to vacuum in the afterlife." Oh, you know what? I'll make a statue. Dude, they even uh, I didn't read this when I was doing the research for this. I just remember reading this a long time ago. Maybe you know about this. I read that they actually put live servants. Yes, and, they and did. Them. They did. It's disgusting. Sucks for that guy, man. Yeah. yeah, but I think for them it was like an honor. You know, like you Lucky like that guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't Yeah. Die for your country Culture. or whatever. <laughs> die for your pharaoh. That I mean that's like a thing It that's... probably was like the highest servant, like the most I'm important sure. person. And they're like, I'll do this for you, master, and then like, damn it. Like they're just sitting there in the tomb, starving to death. Maybe they had beer. Dude, that's not, <laughs> that's that's that that whole like dying for whatever is is not a unique thing, you know. No, that's yeah. lots of cultures. Like we we watched what, uh, the samurai or oh, uh, Japanese what's it called? Um Sapoku? That's yeah, but that's not <laughs> That's it's an honorable death, but that's usually like you messed up. Oh, is it? Yeah, like you don't you don't want to uh, you don't have to do that if you're at that point. Then that sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, they uh, and then the Vikings they mm-hmm. had ritual sacrifices where they would like somebody died important and they would sacrifice a servant. And what about the uh, send them um, to Valhalla? When we went to um, uh, was it Cancun when we went to the uh, the Mayan ruins? Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. Yeah, Chichen Chichen Itza. Itza. Yeah. And they used to pick the, you know, a young girl or whatever to sacrifice. And it was actually an honor. An honor like it was yeah. the most, you Yay, know. pick me. And they, they, they did. They felt honored. But like I can't imagine you're really like. Oh, yes, it must be, be. Well, that's yeah. definitely reason, you know, 2000 of why I like being a man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I never yeah, got no. sacrificed. This is like the first time in cultural history where that's not a thing anymore. Yeah. though. <laughs> oh, all right. If they're not doing it anymore, good. But, right, but Hunger Games, 
Oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. coming in. They start sacrificing yeah. people again. And then Voldemort <laughs> shows up. and <laughs> <laughs> That's serious black guy, Seamus yeah. Blackery, whatever it's Seamus Blackley. <laughs> <laughs> when you see Seamus Blackley show up, he's probably going to play Xbox with you and drink a beer. <laughs> So uh, uh, there was one other interesting. This is kind of all I have on on Egyptian culture before we move on. But uh, I saw this again and again. I don't and I don't know how they know this because I wasn't able to find how they figured this out. So you know, you find when you do a lot of research, a lot of times multiple people will point to the same the fact same, from the yeah, same yeah. source. You know, when you're just bored and you want to research something, you know, everybody <laughs> does it all the time. Does not everyone do that? Well, I mean, how many, like, clay pots can you find with beer in it? They're all going to be referencing the same couple they found ones. A, no, they know? found a lot. With this specifically, in Egypt, a ton. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's quite a few. But um, and maybe full ones that are sealed, like, yeah, in the trend, yeah. that probably wasn't very often. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they say that, like, the most popular flavorful beer that was consumed in Egypt, I don't know for how much of that time, was literally blood red. And, uh, oh, you know, I remember now, actually, one of the references talked about how they got it. Um, there was, like, some, it was another poem sort of thing, uh, and it was talking about this god uh, who, oh, let's see if I can remember, they, um, it was Ra, okay? Mm-hmm. Ra, which is that the was sun main, god. Yeah. That was like their main mm-hmm. god, right? He was kind of getting old. I didn't know God's age. I didn't But either. apparently he did. And he was worried that the people were going to revolt and try to like uh, take advantage of the, his weakness of his old age. So there was this other goddess who I can't remember what her name is. Uh, and he like basically commanded her to be like an assassin and kill off a bunch of humans to get him in check right Mm -hmm. so she went and does it and as she does it she like i I think ra turns her into like a tiger and she starts like murdering the crap out of people and she gets like this bloodlust and it gets to the point where she's like wanting to bathe in their blood and ra is like okay that's enough now Reel her in a little bit. That's why I'm like 10% of the people dead. Yeah, right? Like all, 50. This them. is a little bit much. Yeah. So she goes to sleep one night and Ra's like, okay, we got to do something about this. So he like brews this blood red beer with like pomegranate juice. Mm-hmm. I guess there's a few. There's This poem is uh, – there's a few different versions of it that they found in different places. So it must have been really popular. Yeah. Uh, some of them say it was uh, pomegranate. Some of them say they use this. They use yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it made it blood red. And um, he like made a ton of it and – flooded this area that he knew that the goddess was going to awaken in or whatever and she wakes up and she's like oh good it's already filled with blood blood." (laughs) so she starts bathing in this beer and she gets like completely drunk and she like chills out and and it makes her hallucinate Mm -hmm. and somehow the combination of the beer and the hallucinogenic root uh makes her turn into a kitten oh and then she was totally nice and then she cuddled with the people instead (laughs) my production assistant is like very excited about the kitten part <laughs> but um i'm gonna move on to our next segment which okay. is the greeks and the romans and that means we need to have our next beer nice and i wanted to find some sort of ancient beer but there's not I could many not. it's hard and when there is one it's only a one-off and they did it six years ago or something yeah so what i found was this beer called uh if you may have heard of moretti mm-hmm. which by the way they're uh uh, Moretti Dark is so freaking good. I don't think it's I've a, had it's that. It's a Doppelbach. It's a German Doppelbach, oh. but it's Italian. Well, this isn't Moretti. <laughs> this is Peretti. Peretti. <laughs> I'd never heard of it before. Hold on. Eh? Eh? No? <laughs> we'll find out if that actually works. We, I did that you you probably weren't too. even in front of the so, uh, camera. I'm gonna pour, I, I actually have four full beers this time. So, Dennis. So, chug a lug. Here's one for you. And as you can see, this is a dark multi beer, yeah, which looks you know, nice. I don't like I don't like just doing the standard lagers that most can I countries, see that, that uh, most countries tend to Can I to, see the bottle? Yeah. Just don't knock anything over. For our listeners. Italian hot mix. Bethany, why don't you describe this uh the color of this beer to the listeners? I cannot see it at the moment. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's a little lighter than a brown ale. Like it, it's a little more see-through. Usually they're a little darker. Uh, it's actually pretty dark for a Doppelbach, don't you think? No, no, no. This one's not a Doppelbach. The Moretti. Oh, this is, oh okay. Gotcha, gotcha. You're thinking of Moretti, not I'm Peretti. Still thinking of <laughs> a Baccarossa. So Intense funny. and toasted. It definitely looks toasty. So yeah. that's oh. funny. I didn't even think about this. That that oh, Doppelbach that Moretti makes is actually called La Rosa. Oh, really? And this and is, this is Baccarossa. Mer- 
<laughs> this is weird. This Pocrasa. is getting weird. So it Intense makes, and toasted. It it doesn't say what style it is on there, mm-mm. does it? Dennis, Dennis can look it up in a second. Not that I see. All right, here's for the crew. It's 7%. I'm surprised. I would have guessed. I mean, I haven't tried it yet, but five and a half maybe for this oh, really? kind of beer. All right. One for me. I apologize to the listeners. It's fun to watch me pour beer, I'm sure, but listening to me pour beer, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not fun to watch me pour beer either. Yeah. It- <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Why don't you taste the beer, David, and tell me how many kinds of hop varieties you think it's Oh, good. the quizzing has mm-hmm. been turned to me. All right, let's see. How many hop varieties? Yep. If I can discern the number of hop varieties <laughs> from taking a sip, then I deserve an award. Actually, it's not that hoppy at all. So. All right. Well, a lot of, you know, there's like bittering hops and there's Yeah, but it's hops, very malty. And there's aroma hops. Oh, it does not smell hoppy either. It's, it smells it's malty. Smell, it tastes malty. I'll very love, malty. I love a good malty beer. Let's see. Mm. Oh, that's really I'm good. I'm very surprised with the amount of hops. It's very that toasted. Is a hint. It okay. says toasted, intense and toasted. Oh, it says to actually yes. say toasted. <laughs> it is. It's toasty. I, I mean, I would have guessed without you saying that comment too, but obviously it's more. I'm going to go with six, Dennis. How many varieties of hops do you think is in this beer? I'm sure you can tell just by Eight. tasting it. <laughs> Eight. Why would you guess six? Just curious. Is that the answer? It is. <laughs> Are you serious? Which is bizarre because we, like, in my beer tastings, this is <laughs> one of the questions, how many types of hops, like, if, if it lists it, we always guess it. So I would say 95% of beers that we have have three kinds of hops. And That's those are common, yeah. Yeah, those are even IPAs. Well, you have whatever. an aromatic hops, you have a bittering hops, and you have, a, like, a flavor Yeah, hops. so um, most are three, sometimes two, sometimes four. I don't remember the last time we had one with six. And That's this isn't lot. even a hoppy. I know. It's, it's very not. malty. I mean, you get a little bit, kind of in the middle, but it's not, it's only like if you're paying attention. Yeah, yeah. I wonder it's how many types of malts beer. they have. Well, maybe that's Dennis, right. can you look up six? Look Lupoli. up uh, Peretti with a P, not a B. Ba- oh, Bach Rosa. I didn't even notice it was Bach. It's a Bach. That's the answer. Yeah, I already said that. No, I don't know why. I thought you were saying something in Italian. Bach Rosa. I do know a little bit of Italian. So it's a Bach. This is a German style. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So Moretti La Rosa, also a German style. What am I looking up? You don't have to look it up now. It was no. on there. <laughs> I guess I'm being replaced. <laughs> You've been replaced by, the, by a glass bottle. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, where'd my notes go? Uh, back to the show. Roman people. Roman people. So um, the Romans, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> but wow. A, oh. <laughs> but, uh, do you remember? Wait, uh. hey, <laughs> wait for a little me. late, but you know, <laughs> better late than never. So uh, anyway, uh, the Greeks learned brewing from the Egyptians. So um, that was how beer spread to Europe. Speaking of these two countries combined. Um, did you know that Cleopatra was not Egyptian? She was actually Macedonian from Greece. Really? Yes. What? She was born in Egypt, but she was Macedonian. But whenever you see movies with her in it, she's, she's always a white Egyptian person. Looking. Oh, no. <laughs> she's with always Egyptian. Egyptian like, All makeup. of them are white people. Yes. Though. <laughs> if they have that pointy makeup, then that means they're the Egyptian. pointy makeup. I actually Point, learned pointy makeup. <laughs> It's actually uh, they believe that if they wore makeup in a certain way, and the makeup was filled with the, like tons of minerals, that they'd have prote- uh, protection from Ra and uh, Horan or something. There was well, two if gods. It was S- if it was SPF uh, makeup, <laughs> yeah, then yeah, it, didn't, it, it was probably like lead, and they all Ra. got like eye disease, and like they just fell out of their heads etched, etched <laughs> into their flesh. I gotta put more makeup on. <laughs> yeah, cover up my wounds. I'm being cursed. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but it's protecting me from yeah. Ra. <laughs> no, it's protection from Ra. That's what I said. I thought you said protecting me from him. Isn't that the same <laughs> sentence? <laughs> no. If you put the makeup on, he was giving you protection. Oh, yeah. protection. <laughs> he was helping oh. you through your makeup. <laughs> it's the same words, but somehow you were distinguishing between the two. <laughs> it's like the Protection infection. from Ra. Protection from Ra. <laughs> It's so literally the same words. That's why I was like, you just said the same thing. I say tomato, you say tomato. Let's call the Let's whole thing. 
Quick quiz. Do you remember who famously sings that song? Or do you know? Who? Sinatra? Eh. Yeah. That no you? idea. No. no idea. Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. If you don't know Ella Fitzgerald's music, you should go listen because she's amazing. <laughs> if she was here, she would be very upset at you. She really is good. She's so good. Oh, my God. Anyway. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So uh, so the Greeks learned how to brew. Uh, and then beer brewing spread through the Greek and Roman uh, empires. And they, uh, they sort of um, pushed it aside for wine because wine was uh, – grapes were much more plentiful in those areas of the Mediterranean. And uh, barley was a little harder to come by. Uh, once it started – becoming more of a thing though it, it sort of turned into like a lower class thing like at one point they started calling it uh the beverage of the barbarians or something <laughs> like that uh the barbarians beverage that sounds sexy the beverage of the barbarians <laughs> i know i think that sounds like an awesome name for a brewery right barbarians <laughs> beverage brewery look that up i bet you that exists it has to <laughs> barbarians beverage brewery it's too many bees for it to not exist <laughs> but um uh, yeah, they, uh, it, by around like 500 BC, you know, we're getting much closer to the modern era, or error, error. Modern, I mean, 2020 modern error. But anyway, uh, it became prevalent enough that, you know, you were seeing it in their culture, you were seeing it in their writings and things like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but it really was sort of looked down upon. And as the Roman empire spread throughout Europe, they actually kind of killed the, uh, you know, beer and and uh, it wasn't popular amongst Europeans at all for like quite some time. Um, I had actually read at one point that the uh, beer was like a third of the the price than wine. So like a a middle class person could afford wine, but mostly would get beer and like only do wine for uh nicer occasions that, or, that would you know. that would fit then, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like the low class, it was just cheaper. They were the only ones yeah, that could like, afford it. Oh, I'm having a big party, so I'm going to get a little keg of beer instead of, you know, some vats of wine because <laughs> too many people. It's too expensive. Yeah, exactly. So um, there's a barbarian brewing in Idaho. Uh, that's pretty close. I wonder if they're named after – because this is kind of a thing. I noticed it in several different references, the barbarian's beverage. I think it was like a, a phrase that they mm-hmm. used or something. But It says ancient barbarians never bothered with – pesky concepts like rules or limits and neither do we <laughs> <laughs> this is actually pretty cool yeah. where's where'd you say that was idaho idaho. Oh. idaho we don't get a whole lot of idaho beer here no. the coolest part of our brewery is that we can do whatever we want <laughs> <laughs> but uh, isn't that isn't that technically true with every brewery yeah probably although no no not every brewery a lot of breweries have been Bought out. Partially or fully bought out by big beer or big er beer. <laughs> so uh, there was, yeah, so there was even a point where, um, you know, Plato talked about beer in a couple of his writings. And th- I, I don't know why I, I thought this was just an interesting fact that in one of his writings, he actually says that beer should be consumed at the earliest age, uh, 18. So he thought the legal drinking limit was be 18. 18. And this is, you know, a long time thousands ago. of years ago. <laughs> So I, Do you dis- think this is I disagree what with Plato. They're debating on the Epcot ride when you go through the globe. And they're, yes. <laughs> they're like contemplating life. They're actually talking about beer. Because it's right after ancient Egypt when they make papyrus or whatever. And then the next yeah, room that's right. is like them no, talking about... No, but the, about- Greeks, the Greeks are doing a play. It's the Romans who are talking. That's true. It uh-huh. was the Romans with the horse that... They yeah. could have been like stupid barbarians in their <laughs> beer. I'm a Roman. Look at my horse. Well, you didn't do enough work today. You only get three beers instead of five. <laughs> Doc him a day's pay. He's sleeping <laughs> on the job. <laughs> they just crack the clay tablet. <laughs> Make up a new one. There's some guy like, oh, my God. It's going to take half a day. <laughs> got to bake hey, it four times. Hey, honey, it's I like, won't be able to come home tonight. i got to <laughs> make another tablet. got to make a <laughs> stupid tablet. And he's saying that to some dude who has to now run across town to tell the wife. <laughs> Oh, okay, boss. They didn't have he has ravens. to write it on a clay tablet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this should be on the F car, right? <laughs> Please. 
<laughs> some guy like sending a message to his wife. Sorry, I can't be home. I got to do work. I've got to make a clay tablet. Like, I can't like, read it. it Why didn't you just make a clay tablet? <laughs> I just imagine like Fred Flintstone just <laughs> trying to <laughs> the old text message. Yeah. No, but he would he would put it in front of like a prehistoric bird. <laughs> And like pull its tail, and yeah. it would be like, ding, 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 ding. it's knocked off my. The guy's like, oh, by the way, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Get a response in like two days. <laughs> oh, loud oh, it. P.S. Do my laundry. <laughs> P.S. Do my laundry. Oh. I mean, that is probably accurate for that time. <laughs> yeah. Can you um, imagine sending texts back then? Maybe we wanted to. Never mind. <laughs> What kind of animal would they use for sending texts? <laughs> Make sure you get my good side. <laughs> Three weeks later, do it over. <laughs> I don't like it. In this tablet portrait, you had D's. <laughs> the clay wasn't the right color. Do it again. Different shades. <laughs> they have like stationary. <laughs> clay stationary. Ah. Ah. So anyway. This is, this is a tangent. So, you know, you had beer. Beer existed in Europe at this point on its own. And the Romans uh, kind of went in and destroyed it. Right. It it became less popular because of the Roman Empire. Right. And um, or I, I guess you should, it didn't, they didn't ruin it. They uh, they pushed it to the lower classes. Yeah. And, it was less um, popular. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't until uh, 5th century AD, you know, who it was that, that brought beer back to Europe? Nope. Christopher Columbus. No, no, no. The, the <laughs> culture, the, the country. Oh, um, oh, oh, oh. The Germans. Yes. Bork, bork, bork. No. Oh, that's right. They're not it the was, bork, It was the Germans. Deutschland. That's right. The, Ang- the Angles and the Saxons, to be exact. But um, The Jets and the Sharks. <laughs> yeah, so once the Roman Empire kind of fizzled away in Europe, the, the Angles and the Saxons took over most of Europe and they they were like beer <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad for should we like smash our cups if together you're, if you're listening if you're listening to this on Spotify or like Apple podcast or something like that you should check out our uh the YouTube version because then yeah the some little of these things weird, are a little the tiny little bits of silence there's usually something ridic- happening. ridiculous <laughs> happening uh but anyway <sighs> um oh look at Look at the time on my <laughs> invisible watch. That's, skin uh, 30. Skin 30. <laughs> it's very original. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was fun times. Fun times. <laughs> uh, thank you for being on the show, Bethany. Oh, I had fun. Thank you for having me. Me too. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, whether you're on our audio podcast or watching the video and you can see my beautiful face we are the beer that history. needs a haircut <laughs> it does need a haircut <laughs> we're the beer history podcast you can find us on twitter you can find us on instagram or facebook we have a discord community that you should join it's super fun and cool and people are neat and if, you're, if you visit us at www.thebeerhistorypodcast.com you can link to all of these social media sites and you can check out our blog or listen to awesome music that we feature on the show. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you crew and, and people and guests and everyone. Have a lovely day. Tune in next time. Bye-bye. Listening to the Beer History Podcast, a Hop Stuff LLC production. For more information and references, visit our website, thebeerhistorypodcast.com. 
my sister, number one co-host <laughs> in all of Canada. <laughs> <laughs>